السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب الشرح لي صدري ويسلي أمري وحل العقة من لساني يقه قولي أمين يا رب العالمين uh, Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another uh, lecture on our series around uh, life coaching Before we start, inshallah ta'ala, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome uh, if you started with us last Saturday when we had our first uh, our first discussion, uh, welcome back. Uh, before we start, inshallah, I want everybody as as we uh, as we kick this off, uh, share the link. Uh, if you if you're if you're joining us right now, share the link, share the khair. Perhaps inshallah, somebody will be able to benefit from this greatly. So inshallah, just click share. Make sure everybody sees uh, sees the link, inshallah ta'ala. You can also do a, a watch group, maybe grab your family, grab your kids, grab everybody in your household, inshallah. And let's um, let's watch this together, inshallah ta'ala. Um, the other thing too that I think will be very important, uh, we talked about this last time, but if you didn't, uh, if you weren't here, uh, grab a pen and paper. We're going to need a pen and paper for today's talk, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to have some home homework for everybody. Um, and it's going to be very important for us, for those that are going to continue with us these series. So grab a pen and paper. You can also use your phone. Not a big fan of the phone because it can get really, really distracting if people text you and whatnot. But uh, if you want to take notes on your phone as well, that's uh, that's fine. It's not it's not a problem, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, but at least have something that you, you're able to, uh, to write with, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. So um, again, for those that are joining us for the first time, so the series that we do uh, every Monday, uh, Wednesday and Saturday around 6.30 is around this concept of life coaching. And essentially coaching is more about developing ourselves, right? Finding areas in our lives that we're able to do better, right? Whether it's uh, socially, whether it's uh, from a manners perspective, whether it's even financially, whatever it may be, right? Uh, and we have to be able to face ourselves and be honest with ourselves and realize I have things to change. I have certain things to improve. I have certain things to develop, right? Nobody is complete. Nobody is perfect. Nobody um, doesn't have any room for improvement. Every single one of us, every single one of us has some room to improve. And that's what we do together, inshallah ta'ala. So uh, I hope you all ready, inshallah ta'ala. If you have your pen and paper, ready, your phones, uh, whatever it is, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go ahead and, and get started in just a minute, inshallah. Um, if you can just give me a second. And we go ahead and get started, bi'ithnillah, in our topic today. So, so, what are we talking about today? So, we're talking about our most important asset that the human being has. Right? This is the acid that's going to make you the best human being. Right? We gave some examples last time of how some of the companions, like Umar ibn al-Khattab was an incredible companion. Right? Even though he became Muslim a little bit later than so many other companions. Right? But why did he reach greatness? Right? There is this one factor, brothers and sisters, this one acid every one of us has. And everybody, everybody, every one of us has the same, but some of us use it better. And this is our time, al-waqt. Our time is the most important asset in our lives, right? This is what's going to make it and break it for us, right? A lot of us have a lot of responsibilities, right? A lot of us have a lot going on. Some of us feel like we have a lot of time, right? Actually, one of my one of my friends used to say that as a Muslim, you shouldn't be bored. As a Muslim, listen to this carefully. As a Muslim, you should never get bored. And I'm like, wait, what does that even mean? Because to us, brothers and sisters, in Islam, our time is very valuable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about time in the Quran in so many places. The most famous of all of them is Surah Al-Asr, when Allah swears by the time. Right? It's what we all love. We love to recite it in our salah uh, because it's a beautiful surah and it's also very short. <laughs> and that's what we all love to do. Uh, but we all love Surah Al-Asr. We all know Surah Al-Asr. Allah swears by the time. Allah also swears by the time in other places, like Al-Fajr. Allah swears by the time of Al-Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the day and the night. Right? 
right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the day and swears by the night. Allah by the swears by the time of duha, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time in so many different places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most important ritual act that we have, Allah swears, Allah tells us that salah, inna salata kanat al mu'minina a kitab al mawquta, right? It is a timed act of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala organized our day and organized our salah in a timely manner. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to pray whenever I feel like it. So in Islam, time management is extremely important. Time management is extremely important. Now, when we think about that concept of time management, okay, it's all going to be a matter of how efficient are you with your time. Now, what do, what do I mean by that? In the early 1900s, um, this concept of management and efficiency started by a man. His name was Frederick T Taylor. Frederick Taylor. This is just an FYI, uh, but for those who are interested. He is known to be the father of the efficiency movement. And obviously, as, as somebody who's trying to learn, you know, management time or managing anything, his a lot of his principles he actually wrote a book called principles of scientific management and this is has to do with time management it has to do with even business management it has to do with people managing other people managing a team managing money managing anything right managing uh, a production line whatever type of management he's known to be the father of management right he was somebody that started a lot of these foundational principles his name is frederick taylor 1911 when he passed away now when he talks about a lot of his uh, his principles a lot of his concepts you realize that it's all about having the right purpose and understanding your priorities having the right purpose and understanding your priorities and this is what determines how we all use our time because a lot of people for example you meet and you, you always wonder, how come you're so busy? And how are you able to do so much, right? And others, they do very little and they feel exhausted. Right? Maybe, it's, maybe it's us, right? Maybe some of us, we feel like I only have two, three things, but I feel like it's taking the whole day for me, right? Or maybe a lot of us have things that we wish to do. It's like, man, I wish I could learn this, or I wish I could do this. I wish I could exercise more. I wish I can spend a little bit more time with my family, right? For those who have a family and, and they want to do this. I wish I can start a business. I wish I can get my degree in this. I wish I do this. I wish I do that. We all have these different wishes. And the barrier is that we don't have time, right? We, or, or we claim, we claim that we don't have time. But he says that everybody has the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours in the day, aren't we? We all have exactly the same. The problem is a lot of us don't even think what is our priorities. What is the priorities that are, what are the things that are important in my life, right? And this is going to be different from a person to a person, right? What are the things that I do right now that I have to do? Like, for example, some of us are in school. Some of the students who are watching us, we are in school. I have a study. Like, I can't, I cannot study. I cannot just skip my classes. Or, or do, don't do my homework, or don't study, for example. No, we have to study. Others might be working. So there are certain aspects of our day, or certain aspects of our life that we have to do. And then we have some free time. This is where everybody falls. Or some people make it, some people don't. Because I'm able to use this time to the best of my ability, to find the stuff that I care about the most. Now, when we think about Frederick Taylor, did he come up with something new? You know, was this, was this like something that we didn't know about? I actually want to take you back 1400 years ago to the Prophet ﷺ, right? To the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And when you look at his guidance, you know, the Prophet was so busy. He, had so, he, was running, he was running an entire country, an entire empire, right? By the time... It was Hajjat al Wada in the very end of his life. He had over a hundred thousand companions. This was his entire his entire nation, right? And 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 this was a lot of people, 
right? For someone who lived in the desert, right? He was married to multiple to multiple women. He had so much going on. But you know what's interesting? He had time to ask little kids about their birds. You know, he had time to know a man has some sort of a self-esteem issue, right? And you're like, wait a minute, how? Like, how did he have that time? Like, how did he have that time to do these little simple things? You know what I mean? He had time to uh, to spend with his family. Like, he would race with Aisha radiallahu anhu. You know, someone like him, and you know, I'm, I'm going to talk to, if anybody's watching me and your husband out there, and I know it can get really... Uh, it can it, it can get really busy if you have a kid or two or, or multiple kids. But the Prophet was so busy, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had so much on his plate, and he had a he had a much busier schedule than all of us. But he had time to sit with his wife and have a conversation. And you're like, with well, how? How did you have that time? How like how were you able to do all of this? At the same time. And yet, he had time at the end of the night to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all night long. Right? And even when, when some of the companions wanted to be like him, and he says, oh, I'm going to spend the whole night and never uh, uh, and pray and never sleep. He says, no, that's not what I'm doing. I sleep too. You know, subhanAllah, it is fascinating. How was he able to manage his time? And I would rather, I don't know about you, but I would rather to seek guidance from the Prophet sallallahu of how he was able to manage his time than anybody else. Because I know there is no any better role model out there. Even in these topics that we think they're not Islamic, okay? I want to take it from the Prophet. I want to learn from the Prophet. Now, one of the barriers, and I'm going to talk to young guys here for a second. Whenever we talk about the prophets, right, and we have to be honest with each other. You know, because a lot of time when we talk about the Prophet Wasallam, it's like we're talking about someone that we cannot relate to. Because people say, well, the Prophet didn't have Facebook or TikTok. The Prophet didn't have Instagram. You know, the Prophet didn't have all these channels to watch because they're taking so much of his time. The Prophet Wasallam didn't have the lifestyles that we live today. It's very different. So how can you say that the Prophet Wasallam has guidance for me? In very specific thing, yes, I'm gonna follow him when I'm praying. I'm gonna follow him when I'm fasting. I'm gonna follow him when I am uh, getting married. I'm gonna follow him when I am uh, opening a masjid. But time management? You really want me to find the Prophet in time management? Listen to this carefully. And this is very, very important. And this concept is gonna follow us throughout this entire series. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. He says, ما فرطنا في الكتاب من شيء. ما فرطنا في الكتاب من شيء. We did not, we did not leave out anything in this book. من شيء means everything. Like there's nothing that this book does not talk about that can serve as a guidance to the human being. Now, some people who are sometimes trying to poke things in the Quran, trying to figure out some mistakes in the Quran, a man goes to a Sheikh Muhammad Abdul, he's an Egyptian Sheikh from back in the, in the 70s and the 60s. He asked him, he says, wait a minute. Your religion, your book says that it talks about everything. Well, I have a question for you. How many pieces of bread, how many loaves of bread can you make, right, from a handful of wheat? So this man went and asked Muhammad Abdul and he says, you claim that your religion and your Quran and your book talks about everything. Well, I want you to answer me from your Quran, okay, how many loaves of bread I can make from a handful of wheat? He says, yeah, easy, of course. So Sheikh Muhammad Abdul goes, he finds a baker. He finds somebody who knows how to bake. He has a bakery and he asked him, he says, listen, I have a handful of wheat. How many pieces of bread can I make? And he said, you know, whatever. He said seven or eight. So he goes back to the man and he says, you can eight. He says, but wait a minute. I didn't ask you from the baker. I asked you from your Quran. Because your Quran claims that it talks about everything. He says, yes, this is from the Quran. He was like, no, but you asked the baker. 
He says, well, my Quran tells me, وَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So my Quran, my book guides me and tells me that I should ask the people of knowledge when I don't know. Now, I don't know anything about bread. I'm a sheikh. I'm not a baker. I don't do bakery. I don't know anything about bread. So I went and I asked the people of knowledge. And the people of knowledge is the baker. And obviously the man realized that our Quran provides us principles. It doesn't touch on every little piece of details in your life. But it provides you principles. And if you're able to follow these principles, something fascinating will happen. You know what's going to happen? I want you guys to write this down. For those that have been watching with us so far, I asked everybody to bring a piece of pa uh, a pen and paper and write this down. Okay? Surah An nur which is Surah number 24, Ayah 54 and 55 and 56. Just write it down. I want you to go back. And this is going to be your homework for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. I want you to spend some time with this verse. We're supposed to be talking about time management. But this is more important. Because this is the foundation of everything else that we're going to learn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in, the, in, 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 in these verses. So again, Surah An-Nur, so which is ver, uh, uh, Surah number 24, verse 54, 55 and 56. Okay, write them down inshallah ta'ala. And we, I, I want you to go back and read it over and over and over and over again. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Allah says to the Prophet sallam, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Now obey him in what? Allah didn't tell us. How, follow the Prophet, do I follow the Prophet in everything he said? Or do I follow the Prophet in some of the things I said? Allah didn't say. Just, Allah says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ And he left it open. That's number one. And then he says, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ So he's telling the Prophet If people turn away, if people decide to say, man, I don't care about the guidance of the Prophet. You know, it's from 1400 years ago. He lived in the desert. It kind of doesn't work for me. Okay. Allah says, What that basically means is the Prophet had an assignment that he was charged for. He had a task to fulfill. And we, as the followers of the Prophet, have a task to fulfill. His task is to relay the message. The task of the Prophet is to relay the message. Our task is to what? To listen to the message. This is our task. And Allah is saying, you are going to be charged on that task. وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا Allahu Akbar. I want you to write a hundred lines after and under this. وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا And when you obey him, you will be guided. Actually, this is وَإِن, which means if. And if you obey him, you will be guided. Well, Allah still didn't say obey him in what? Do I obey him when I'm about to study for my exam? Do I obey him when I'm about to cook my food? Do I obey him in salah? Well, I'm going to obey the Prophet in salah because it makes sense. You know, it's a religious act, it's a ritual act. So I'm going to listen to the Prophet. It makes sense. Is that it? Or is there more? Some of the scholars, they said that the more you obey the Prophet, the more you'll be guided. And now let me talk about this for a second because it's extremely important. Dear brothers and sisters, in 2020, many of us obeyed the Prophet ﷺ in some aspects, but not in every aspect. And that's why we find ourselves guided in some things and misguided in other things. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell you obey him in what? He says, وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا If you obey him, you will be guided. So if you obey him in marriage, your marriage will be guided. If you obey him in your salah, your salah will be guided. If you obey him in your business, your business will be guided. If you obey him in your relationship with your son and your daughter and your siblings and your friends, you will be guided in those relationships. If you obey him in financial management, there are 40 hadith. I'm going to talk about some of them, inshallah, in later series about financial management that the Prophet ﷺ gave advice to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, right? If you obey him in financial things, you will be guided in your finances. The Prophet talked about money management. Can you imagine? 1400 years ago, when there was no banks, there was no interest, there was no none of this, and the Prophet gave guidance to finances to the Prophet ﷺ, to the companions, right? If you follow him in your physical, 
You know, today people pay thousands of dollars to go to a, a, a physical coach who can make them look a certain way. The Prophet Sallallahu gave guidance to physics, to your, to your own physical uh, being, your own well-being. The, and, and again, if you obey him in these aspects, your body will be guided. If you obey him in your relationship with, with yourself, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-value, right? We'll talk about all these different things, inshallah ta'ala. Allah says he will guide you. So understand, brothers and sisters, that the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when you obey him, you will be guided. And it's open end. And the more we obey the Prophet, the more we will be guided. Now, guided in what? Is this about Jannah? Is this just about going to Jannah at the end of the day? What's the next verse? The next verse is, is, is phenomenal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'ad Allahu ladheena amanu minkum wa'amilu salihat. Allah promised those who believe, who believe in what Allah says previously. What did Allah say previously? When you obey the Prophet, you will be guided. So Allah is saying, listen to this carefully. Allah is saying, He promises those who believe in Allah and believe in whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just said and do good deeds and follow these good deeds. What's going to happen to them? Are they going to go to Jannah? Are they going to be, as, as, are they going to have good prayers? Is it going to be about their spirituality? Is it going to be just about their religion? No, Allah says, Allah will give you authority on this earth. Allah will give you leadership on this earth. When you follow the Prophet, وسلم, it's not just about being religious, it's about being the next Steve Jobs, it's about being the next Bill Gates, it's about being the best basketball player in America, it's about being the best you can be. Allah says, Allah will give them authority on earth. Man, Allah Akbar. It's fascinating how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to listen to the Prophet, not just for the akhirah, but for your dunya. And then Allah continues saying, Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Sulaiman alayhi salam the, the kingdom of the east and the west? Didn't Allah give Dhul Qarnayn the kingdom of the east and the west? He had authority over the entire earth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sulaiman and Dhul Qarnayn. Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor the, the generations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have Islam spread from the Hind and the Sindh all the way to Al-Andalus to Europe and North Africa and the entire Arabian Peninsula. This is what Allah promised. And this is again... My series is not about spirituality. My series is about understanding that when you are a better human being, Allah will give you authority on earth. Allah will make you successful as a businessman, as a wife, as a husband. Allah will make you successful in your job. Allah will make you successful in the community. Everybody would want to be like you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying, Allah will establish your religion. Allahu Akbar, Allah will make your religion. Everybody wants to be like you. Can you imagine a day that everybody wants to be a Muslim because of how Muslims look like, of how Muslims behave, of how Muslims act? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues by saying, وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا Allahu Akbar, Wallahi, these, these verses are so powerful. You know, when you look at Muslims today, to be honest, we're weak, man. We're weak, right? We have a lot going on for us from Syria to, to Palestine, to Iraq, to China, to, to Al-Hind, to Bangladesh. Man, we're, we're, we're broken. Our ummah is broken. And it's going to be our job as young people to bring the Izzah back to our ummah. But we cannot do it outside of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وَإِن تُطِعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا And when you obey him, you'll be guided. And you obey the Prophet you'll be guided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that He's going to give you authority on earth. He will establish your religion. He will establish you as a leader. Everybody will look up to you just like in, 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 in the generations after the Prophet wasallam, right? In the golden ages of Islam, when people used to send their kids to Al-Andalus or to Al-Iraq 
or to Halab or to Damascus to used to send them to learn Arabic. Just like people today send people, send their kids to America back in the day. And if you obey him, you'll be guided in everything you do in your life. Now, before I end, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to take only two minutes from your time, inshallah. I want you to leave you with a hadith. And this hadith is going to be connected to our homework. So we have two assignments, inshallah ta'ala, as homework. And I know we have Ramadan and there's a lot going on. And I'm not going to check on you. Yeah, and there's no way for me to check if you did the homework or not. But it's for your own self. I mentioned this last time. We're going to be our self-coaches throughout the month of Ramadan. Right? We're going to ask ourselves certain questions and we're going to work on ourselves as, as much as we can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, an authentic narration mentioned in Surah Imam Tirmidhi, uh, Rahmatullah Alayhi. He, he mentioned, the Prophet he says, لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن عمله فيما فعل وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه A man on the day of judgment will not go to the next level, will not move from the day of judgment, which means this will determine your next step. Understand that the Prophet ﷺ always wants to connect your life to the hereafter. They're not disconnected, they're just continuation. So what the Prophet ﷺ says, you'll be asked about your time and how you spend. You'll be asked about your knowledge and how you, what did you do with your knowledge? Whatever it is that knowledge, you were a doctor, an engineer, you were a sheikh, you, 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 you were a teacher, whatever it is. What did you do with your knowledge? And then what did you do with your money? How did you earn your money? How did you spend your money? And how did you take care of your physical? I like to characterize these four things, these things into four things. Number one, Allah is going to ask you about your mental health, your mental health and your spiritual health. How are you spending your time? The way you spend your time is going to affect your heart and it's going to affect your mind. Allah will ask you about your intellectual health, right? And ilmihi, on your education, on your knowledge, this intellectual health. Allah will ask you about your financial health, money management. Allah will ask you about money management. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about your physical health, right? Understand that this hadith is not just about your spirituality. It's about your holistic aspects of your life. It's every element of your life. Now your homework is as follows. I hope you guys are writing this down for those that joined us. Uh, if, if, you, if you just joined us right now on, on, the, on the live stream, you can maybe go back and you understand where this homework uh, is coming from, inshallah ta'ala. There's two assignments, inshallah, for your homework. Number one, I want you to write down the five things that you do in your day and you find, and you find some benefit in them. Whatever they may be. You could say sleep. You know, sleep gives you some power, right? Whatever you would like to eat. Just write down five things you do in your day and what benefit do these five things bring you? Whatever it may be, there's no judgment. And then again, this is for your own notes. I'm not going to say this. If you can share this with me, that'll be phenomenal. Maybe we can figure out a way uh, we, can, we can share it with this together. Now, the second question is, what are five things that you wish you can start doing? So five things that you do today and you find some benefit on a daily basis and five things that you wish you actually do. Right, and inshallah ta'ala, we'll talk about uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit deeper into time management, inshallah ta'ala, next uh, on Wednesday, inshallah, at 6 30 sharp. Jazakumullah khairan, really appreciate you all joining us. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, make this the best Ramadan of you for, for you, inshallah, and your family. And please do not forget myself and my family in your dua. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfirka wa natubu ulaik. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته